guys, welcome back to my channel. Okay, can we talk about this bad nose contour? <laughs> I would like to profusely apologize for this bad contouring. I tried out Carly by Bell's new video and obviously it did not work for my shaped nose. So I just wanted to put it out there. Okay, moving on. If you are new here, my name is Candy. I'm obsessed with makeup, beauty, and a little bit of vlogging, you know. So make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. Also make sure you hit that bell notification so you can get a notification every time I upload a sweet video. <laughs> okay, so today's video is a bit different. It's a bit more of a story time. And um, if you have been following me on Instagram, you'll know exactly what it's about. If not, I do want to explain for those who are pretty new to this thing and don't know what it's all about. So I basically had a non-surgical otoplasty done. So what is that you may ask? It's when you basically have your ears pinned back without going into actual surgery. So there's a few things I wanted to mention around what it is, how it works, the recovery and all of that. I have actually been receiving a lot of questions around how it's done, how the healing process is and all of that. And if you are one of those people who have sent me a message on Instagram, I'm really sorry for not responding, but it's so difficult because um, I'll explain everything later on. So first of all, I just quickly want to touch base on my story. I remember uploading a few Instagram stories around this topic and really just sharing my opinion of it and why I shared it online because um, my ears were one of those things that made me feel really insecure. I would never ever wear my hair up. I was teased about it in school. I remember getting very emotional when I spoke about this on my Instagram stories because so straight after the procedure when I looked into the mirror I just started crying because it was like this it was the strong feeling of overcoming something that's always held you back and actually since then I've been loving my hair out of my face <laughs> as you can see I even have it up today um, and I've just been rocking up styles and all these sort of hairstyles that showing my ear and there's just like a new level of confidence that has stepped up to the game <laughs> I'll maybe insert a few clips in here in case you don't follow me on Instagram so you can just see more or less what I spoke about so I don't really know where to start or how to start the story because I know that I'm probably possibly opening up myself or hate comments or criticism but I just feel like I want to share my story and even if it just helps one person out there or even someone's child who might be struggling with the same thing then you know it's all worth it so it's really scary when you sit down and you talk about something you have been so sensitive over and I've been extremely emotional today so I'm going to try my best not to try not to cry because I have been crying a lot um, but you know part of being on social media is also that I can show you guys when I'm being real and when I'm being raw and um, sometimes we don't want to share those things but I think it's good that I sit down and I share my story with those who want to hear it today. So growing up, I never really had problems with myself. I think as a young kid, you always just kind of not bothered. <laughs> um, and um, I never really thought that my ears were an issue before. So I remember the very first comments I got about my ears was basically when I just got into high school and um, the, the guys were asking girls out to go to the Valentine's Day ball and um, you know I, I didn't really get a date and the one guy joked with his friend he's like oh, ask that girl with the ears that one with the ears and um, I went home I, I remember staring at myself in the mirror thinking what what does he mean like what's wrong with my ears you know like I never thought I had had a problem with my ears and it's only then that people started really like pointing it out like oh this ear sticks out more than that one or um you know kids would look at all the photos of me and and always said ah, said backward I got so obsessed with hiding my ears, I would wear headbands over them and then I started discovering a way of doing my hair and doing my pony so my hair kind of 
like goes into my pony and it pulled my ears tight and flat so it wouldn't stick out at all and i had such an issue with my hair every morning to get it like that to get my ears to go flat and it really consumed my life like even my dad used to sit with me often and i would cry about my ears begging them for me to go for surgery to fix them um so i could just wear my hair normal and it was really hard, you know, being teased about it is not. <laughs> I think every person has a story. Or well, maybe not every person. But if anyone ever experienced being bullied in school or being teased, it's something that really breaks you. And it's something that stays with you for so long. Because, I mean, I'm 29 now. <laughs> and it was still bothering me. And I still really wouldn't wear my hair up that much. And I always got comments about it when I did. And, um, you know, even wearing my hair over my ears was still not good enough. Because then I got teased. And kids were saying that, oh, I probably couldn't hear them now that I'm wearing my hair over my ears. So it's just like you cannot win. And I feel like my heart really goes out to kids who struggle with the same thing. Not just having ears that stick out, but also just dealing with being teased. And, and so even a few years ago, I think about three years ago, I really tried to get over it. I prayed about it a lot so I can get move past it. And I remember filming a video for YouTube where I showed you how to apply lash extensions. And um, I spoke about it. My hair was all back and my ears were out. And I got a lot of love from people. But it wasn't long until the bullying messages started flowing. And I had to start deleting them and blocking them. And, and I felt like I was right where I started. And at that moment I just decided oh I'll just wear my hair down for the rest of my life I will never wear a ponytail if I do wear a ponytail you'll always see me taking photos from the side I would never have like photos facing front um because I feel like facing front you could see that I had weird weird ears and um you know when I met Dr. B um this was one of the first things I told her was that I have an issue with my ears. Please don't put my hair behind my ears when you take photos because I really have an issue with them. And she told me that we can fix it. We can fix it for you. It's not an invasive surgery, um, but it is a procedure with threads and we can do it for you. And I was not really into it because it's scary and um, I was thinking it won't be possible to fix them. And I kind of just left it. So we did like bit of lips and you know played around with those sort of things um but up until um a few weeks ago we are really we are really decided that this is something that I wanted to do for myself so this morning was the morning that I had my ears done and I was crying happy tears because it was almost like a funeral. <laughs> I had a funeral for all the all the ugly comments made towards me, all the negative things said, all the things that broke me down, all just because of my ears. And I was just so amazed at how how God really gives doctors wisdom in order to help people with things like this because I'm thinking if if there's a kid out there who has got ears that stick out you know this procedure can really help them and that is why I wanted to share it with you guys even though it's such a sensitive topic and I get so emotional around it because this is really something that changed my life and yes I am 29 now maybe I'm only 29 or maybe I'm already 29 maybe it's too late to have done this but it was just like I remember when they showed me when they showed me my ears. It was like it was such a relief because I felt like everything that's always been said about me can just like bye. <laughs> it can just stay in the past now because girl, my ears are looking good. <laughs> people used to tell me but there's nothing wrong with your ears like there's really nothing wrong with them and I appreciated it but 
because of the comments I've had and because of the bullying I've had to go through, um, it's it's always there. And I think the wrongest thing to do is to tell someone, but there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, there's nothing, you know, instead of encouraging them, you should actually be saying, you know what, I think you're really beautiful, but there's like a procedure that you can do to fix it. Why don't you look at something like that, you know, because I feel when people are saying there's nothing wrong with you, they're just kind of saying that to make you feel better. And then you kind of know, okay, they're just saying that to make me feel better. I don't know if that makes sense. But other than that, I really feel like today was such a victorious day for me. Look at how nervous I am because I'm sharing my story. And I really hope that you guys received it well and that it could help someone out there even if it's just one person then it's worth it so i cannot wait for my ears to heal properly i absolutely love them and you're definitely gonna see me rocking them all over the gram right now <laughs> so after i posted these stories the amount of dms i received was insane from people sharing their story people sharing their insecurities people telling me they go they went through the same thing they know exactly what it's like not to wear your hair up or having an issue with wearing your hair behind your ears and it was so crazy because i was very um i wasn't sure if i wanted to post about it because people can receive it in the wrong way in terms of you know this is how you were created and accepted and and, and which really I do I loved myself even before I changed my ears but with my ears pinned back the confidence level is just insane and I don't know I wanted people to feel that same feeling and it's crazy how many people's lives I touched and a lot of people also actually booked for this procedure um, so let's quickly talk about the Otoplasty that's non-surgical. Okay, first of all, the surgical one is pretty invasive. It's a very intense surgery. You have to go into theater. Um, you know, they basically cut you open and do all these things while you under, what's the word, narcotics? Narcosis? Narcosis. But it's the anesthesia where they put you to sleep and all those sort of things. It's a very expensive surgery. Um, the healing time is insane. It takes forever to do that. And as mentioned before, my parents really didn't have the funds for me to go through that procedure. It's obviously thousands and thousands and thousands of rands. I think that's why a lot of people don't do it and also some people actually messaged me said that they did do it and they were not happy with the results at all like it wasn't completely back or one ear was still like weird or something like that so with the non-surgical otoplasty and this is actually so phenomenal and this really interests me so much how the medicine world is just evolving and how things are becoming more simpler and more safer and less invasive which is really cool so you guys know that I work with Dr. B she's not only from White Lives Aesthetics and she's absolutely amazing she's also a very close friend of mine and um, apart from the fact that she's an amazing doctor she just has a heart for people she just loves people and the way she treats them is just amazing and sometimes that's really important when you're looking for a doctor with any procedure even if it's lip fillers or Botox or whatever you want someone who is you know kind-hearted and cares about you so first of all that's a big thing for me so the product that actually used to do this with is called Aptos Threads. Now with Aptos Threads there's so many things you can do. You can do a brow lift where you get the brows to like lift. You can literally do like a facelift because they put the threads under your skin and it pulls it tight. Eventually after a few years it starts dissolving and it produces more collagen which will naturally um, tighten the skin and do all those things. But with this specific thread... Um, it's non-dissolvable, so it's actually a permanent thread. And when Dr. B told me they can actually do ears, I was pretty skeptical because you don't see a lot of them. I did some research online and I couldn't really find a lot of before and after photos and stuff like that. Because I really do believe like in South Africa, it wasn't a procedure that was done as often, it wasn't as common. And when I spoke about it, people will never know what it is. So eventually I got to the point where I was like, I'm gonna do this, okay? so. The actual process of going through it is um, 
pretty scary in the sense of you kind of you're awake throughout the whole process so you can feel the tugging and pulling of the skin so basically what they do is they numb the area with um, sorry I'm obviously not a doctor so I don't know the correct terminology for this but I'll try and explain it the best I think it's called anesthetic anesthetic local anesthetic where they inject the needle to numb the ear so they would numb the whole ear um, first and obviously they put like a cloth over your face with just a hole over here so they can work and everything sanitary and stuff like that um, so it is a bit freaky because lying underneath a cloth you're obviously covered and so if you're uncomfortable with that they'll always like open up a bit so you can see through and that sort of thing um, so they numb the area with local anesthesia and then once it's numb completely, you can't feel a thing, they literally make a small incision on the top of the ear, right here. Then they go through with the needle and the thread. And this is the freaky part because you feel everything. You don't feel any pain at all, no, no pain at all. But you feel the tugging and the pulling and the pushing through your ear. And I don't want to freak you guys out if this is something you're thinking about because it really isn't the worst part at all. It's really like I say you don't feel pain. The only pain you feel is when they inject the area to numb it. And that's just like a little burn sting. I would say it's like a 3 out of 10. It's really not that painful. It's just weird feeling the tugging and pulling. Um, I think the whole procedure took us like 20 minutes and then we were done with both ears. Um, so they first do the one and then they do the other one. So how it works is they work through, I believe, in between like cartilage and skin and they kind of weave their way through using the anatomy of the ear and then when the thread comes out at the top again, they make a knot. So the best way to kind of explain this is, you know, when you have pants with a piece of a thread in them or cotton or like a tuggy <laughs> um, you like knot them and pull them tight and then whole pants would like go in so that's sort of the same effect it does to your ears so when they pull it tight it kind of pulls the ear back so the ear is standing out and then it like pulls it together to the back they tie it and make sure it's quite secure and then they cut off the edges and just close out the hole I didn't receive any stitches. I know Dr. B said she she rather do stitching now just to be safe to make sure the hole, you know, closes up properly. But I basically just had a plaster covering this little part of the ear, and that is the only open incision you had. Okay, cool. So 20 minutes. Then when it um then you're basically done after that. So the only product I really used was this recovery serum that she gave me. This is actually amazing. It's a biological tissue repair with cell growth factors. And this I use whenever I have my lips done. I'll just like put it on there to heal. When I had the venous treatment or when you have like microneedling done, you can apply this to any sores, any like scarring, any stuff like that. Um, it helps it heal quicker so this is the only product I use so when it comes to recovery and this is why I didn't respond to a lot of DMs I received is everyone kept asking me how long did it take to recover are you yes or so what is the problem? how does it feel da -da -da -da. and it's so difficult for me to respond to everyone because one I'm not a doctor at all and the second thing is I don't want to respond to people and say to them, listen, listen, this is what got, what's going to happen. Because that's not really my place. It's more for the doctor to discuss that with them. But the third thing, which I think is the most important thing, is that everyone recovers differently. You know, like you'll have your lips done and it will take you a week to recover. Maybe for me it will take a day or I'm bruised for five days. So every person is different. And the same it is when it comes to the ears. You have people with like a much tougher cartilage or you know the ears are shaped differently and this all has some sort of you know impact on the way your results will be and also how long your healing time will be so I thought I would share my healing process with you guys but I wanted to put this disclaimer out there that this is not this does not mean your ears are going to look exactly like mine it might even be flatter it might not even be as flat um it might not heal as fast, it might heal faster. Um, so I wanted to put this disclaimer out there so you guys know this. And that is why I haven't been responding to DMs. Okay, so um, let me take you through my process. So the first day was fine, I didn't feel anything. And obviously my ears were extremely 
flat flat like they were almost against the back of my head like this now I asked Dr. B about this and she said obviously cartilage is a very flexible sort of bone and naturally it will try and go back into that original position that it was in so with the healing it's obviously pushing against the threading as well and eventually it finds a point where it heals completely like mine is now which I'm pretty happy with because just the edges were like quite like that um it went in like that and i'm actually quite happy with the way it healed now um so that first day my ears were extremely like back <laughs> Um, well, for the first two to three weeks, I'd say. But that first day, I didn't feel anything. And then I woke up at like 1 a.m. in the morning. My ears throbbed of the pain, if that is the right word. I could not deal with it. I was walking up and down in the house, like crying and just like doing this. Because it felt like the pain was like all over in my head. Now, obviously that makes sense because your ear has kind of been through a lot, you know. <laughs> so... I remember taking my Pradols and when it eventually started kicking in, I could finally go to bed. And then I found myself literally living on my Pradols for that first week. Um, that first week, I literally had like two my Pradols in the morning, two in the afternoon, two in the evening. Obviously, I'm not promoting that. That is just what worked for me. I'm not saying that that is what you must do. Always, always, always ask your doctor. Dr. B, obviously, will give you advice on what you can use and what you can do. But at that moment, that was just what worked for me too. To help and just calm down the pain and it wouldn't take the pain away completely and it's very difficult to sleep because you can't sleep on your ears so I literally had to get a pillow I know a lot of people I advise to use a headband to sleep with a headband and for the first six weeks four to six weeks I think for the healing but I I physically just could not get that headband on my ears like it was so sore and I decided just to leave it I also asked Dr. B and she told me that it's not really you know it's not a must um, so that is just what I did once again and then after a week my ears wasn't as sore anymore obviously when you touch it like I couldn't do this at all for the first three to four weeks I couldn't even you know do this for the first 43 weeks you literally could not touch it I would just wash the incisions and like wash with a little brushy behind my ear and inside and it was just so sore um but you know after a few weeks I would say by week eight it started feeling way better so I could actually like touch it and like feel it a little bit but sometimes when I put on my t-shirt or take it off and it would like hit my ear I'd be like crying of the pain so the healing process is quite long remember it is cartilage I know if you get a cartilage piercing like this one as well it also takes like up to six months to heal so it can be a very long process for healing but I do think it's way worth it compared to an actual otoplasty where it will take you forever to heal and there is um, you know a chance of infections and all those sort of things and the downtime is just hectic so this is also a way more affordable option obviously you can get in contact with white lies aesthetics to ask for a quote but I believe at the time when I did my ears it's between 15 and 18 thousand rand for a procedure like this and once again it is permanent your ears once they heal like this they're gonna stay like this which I'm really happy about <laughs> now it's been I think three or four months and as you can see my ears went a bit out like they look a bit more natural they didn't look weirdly shaped oh I forgot to mention one thing also within that first four to five days I literally had like cauliflower ear you know like the rugby players have my ears looked so bad and it freaked me out but it was apparently a normal thing to happen because your ear has been put through a lot of stress you know so that will eventually go away and as you can see my ears are perfect <laughs> so I hope this video was helpful and I hope that you um, gained a lot of information out of this video if you're thinking about doing it yourself if you have any other questions please let me know in the comment section down below I will try to answer them and yeah if you stuck around for this whole video thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it I hope it was insightful and interesting <laughs> until my next I had a lipstick on my teeth this entire time. Well, anyways, I'm going to say bye now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, stay sweet. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.